Can you believe this? A modern, civilized nation. That's mostly below sea level. Sounds like science fiction, right? But it's real. Right in the heart of Europe lies a country known for tulips, windmills, and picture-perfect cities. A country where biking is a way of life, and canals weave through medieval architecture like veins of history. Welcome to the Netherlands, a place as charming as a postcard and as unbelievable as a fantasy. Because here's the wild truth. Nearly one-third of the country lies below sea level, and over 60% of its population lives in areas that, without protection, should technically be underwater. Let that sink in. If the pump stopped running and the sea walls gave way, half the country would be submerged by the ocean. And yet, the Dutch not only live here, they thrive. So, how did the Dutch turn a sinking swamp into one of the world's most developed, innovative, and resilient nations? And how do they keep the sea at bay, even as climate change threatens to undo it all? Let's dive into one of the greatest battles between man and nature. A centuries-long war waged not with swords, but with science, wind, and sheer willpower. First, the numbers will blow your mind. About 26% of Dutch land is below sea level. Over half of the land would flood if the water management systems failed. More than 60% of people live in these at-risk zones. In other words, the Netherlands shouldn't exist as it does. But it does because they made it so. In fact, the name Netherlands literally means lowlands. That's not poetry. That's geography. How did the land get so low? Let's rewind a few million years. Back then, this region was mostly marshland and shallow sea. Massive rivers like the Rhine and Meuse dumped sediment into flat deltas, while the North Sea constantly clawed at the shore. This land was swampy, unstable, a soggy mess between land and sea. But instead of abandoning it, the Dutch said, let's make this home. And they began one of the boldest experiments in human history. Windmills, not just quaint, they were lifesavers. Think of Dutch windmills, and you might imagine postcard villages and old world charm. But these weren't just for grinding grain. Many were actually massive water pumps designed to drain the land. As far back as the 15th century, the Dutch were using wind power to pump water out of low-lying areas, keeping the soil dry, the cities safe, and the farms alive. It was the beginning of a high-tech water management system that would become the envy of the world. Polders, land taken back from a sea. One of the most brilliant Dutch innovations is the polder. It's a piece of land reclaimed from the sea, surrounded by dikes, kept dry by pumps, and constantly monitored. Yes, you read that right. The Dutch literally build giant walls in the sea, pump out the water inside, and start building cities on what used to be ocean floor. The province of Flevoland is one giant example. Almost 1,000 square kilometers of land, born entirely from the sea. It's not just engineering, it's audacity in action. The tragedy that changed everything. In 1953, the sea fought back. A devastating storm combined with high tides broke through the dikes in southwest Netherlands. The result was catastrophic. 1,800 people lost their lives. Hundreds of thousands were displaced. Over 100,000 hectares of land were flooded. It was one of the worst natural disasters in modern European history. But it also lit a fire under the Dutch government. They knew they had to do more. And what came next was a marvel. Delta Works, the eighth wonder of the world? Delta Works is the Dutch answer to the sea. A network of dams, storm surge barriers, locks, and dikes built over three decades, costing billions of euros. Its job? To keep water out. To tame the North Sea. It's so advanced, so massive, that engineers around the world call it the eighth wonder of the modern world. But now a new threat rises. Climate change is rewriting the rules. Sea levels are rising. Storms are getting stronger. If the sea rises by even one meter, something scientists say could happen within a few decades. Millions of Dutch lives could be in danger once again. But here's what makes the Netherlands different. They're not panicking. They're planning. Adapting to water, not fighting it. Instead of just building higher walls, the Dutch are taking a radical new approach, living with the water. Some of their solutions include floating homes that rise and fall with the tide, room for the river, 
a project that literally gives rivers more space to flood safely. Water-friendly cities, urban designs that embrace water instead of pushing it away. The philosophy is clear, don't fight nature, flow with it. A tiny country with a giant lesson. The Netherlands makes up just 0.008% of the planet's land, but it's shown the whole world what's possible with vision, discipline, and determination. They've proven that. Science and smart engineering can reshape the earth. A united people can overcome even the most impossible odds. We don't have to fear water. We can learn to live with it. In a time when climate change threatens nations from Vietnam to Bangladesh to the Maldives, maybe the world's future depends on learning from this tiny, water-defying nation. As the Dutch love to say, God created the world, but the Dutch created the Netherlands. So what do you think of the Netherlands' centuries-long battle to claim and protect their home? If a small country like this can turn the sea into farmland and build a nation on top of water, then maybe, just maybe, we're all capable of rewriting our futures too. If you enjoyed this deep dive, hit that like button, share it with someone who needs to hear it, and don't forget to subscribe, because there are so many more hidden stories waiting beneath the surface of our world maps.